Here. Wilson. Here. Okay, first item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Move approval. Second. <coughs> yeah, motion and second. Any discussion? Those in favor indicate yes. 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 Those opposed, no. The agenda is approved as presented. Let's take a look at previous minutes. Uh, I've got a thing here that talks about the minutes. Maybe we got that corrected. Of the Gen yeah, here of the January 8th. There was no meeting on January 8th that wasn't convened. So we're gonna. But we adjourned it. So. Oh no, we just left. I'll make that note that we technically adjourned it. <laughs> okay. Uh, let's you, take. You made the motion, said in here. I said, we're out of here. <laughs> no, there it is, motion by Bagelman. Oh, my goodness. Odom, uh, we're out of here. <laughs> the, uh, the meeting of uh, December the 4th, though, have you had a chance to take a look at those mm -hmm. minutes? Ben, just one piece on that. I was under the impression that the commission's discussion was going to result in a revision on the visual barrier uh, standards document, uh, especially with respect to steel chain link and but I wasn't quite sure how it was going to come out uh, and I, I didn't see it in in the paperwork I had that may be in the documents you have right I didn't put it on the agenda I can bring that up under old business I can present it at that time and show you I, did you want to I just like to bring closure to that okay. because I think we you know Rich and Susan did a good piece of work in putting that together and it'd be good just to take that off our table and Make sure it's available. Okay. Anything else on the minutes of the 4th of December? There is um, in the third paragraph uh, after the motion point three saying that Mr. Huser will follow up with Mr. Coho to re make sure that the uh, minutes accurately reflect some information. Did that happen? Yeah. Yes, it did. Yes, it did. Okay. <laughs> Anything else? <coughs> I think that'll show up too in the next piece that we do on the November sixth meeting uh, minutes. But yep. Uh, anything else on December four? Let's hear a motion to approve them then as presented. So moved. Hear second. Second. Any other discussion? Hearing none. Those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. And those minutes are approved. Let's go to November 6th. There were a couple of things that we talked about there. Uh, I noted <laughs> that uh, Ben underlined the, the new language, and I think that's the result of the, uh, the meeting that uh, you and Ben had. Mm -hmm. So it's... Uh, so on pages 2 and 3, mm -hmm. um, that's the section that talked about um, the uh, U1 zoning district discussion we had about the maps. Um, so I confirm with Mr. Huser via phone call um, generally what um, I re-listened to it, captured basically almost verbatim what was said and polished it too. So he captured the conversation topic. <clears throat> and I believe Mr. Huser was okay with that. I'll let you confirm that. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Anything else on November 6th? And we put off the approval of those until... This meeting, those, uh, I, I need a motion to approve them. <coughs> so moved. I have a motion. Second. A second. Any further discussion? Okay, those in favor say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. And those minutes are, are approved as uh, expanded. Uh, that's a good piece of work because it makes them more worthwhile downstream. Uh, November 6th, one little note then on uh, page four in the paragraph that begins with Ms. Olson confirmed, that's in line five, the word in we took out. Question, if the council resolution in place would require minimum planting standards on the west side of the property? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we, we had taken it out and I think it's one of those little things that it doesn't need any, we, we, we settled it back then, so it, I think we're fine. Uh, let's see, 
communications. Ben, do you have anything? Um, no communications. The only communication I have is a letter from Ben Cohoot uh, reminding us that the Iowa State <coughs> Extension Workshop will be in Waterloo on Tuesday, March 31st, and there are several other dates that are uh, available in other, other parts. Uh, many of us have been to those workshops. I can only commend, especially to the <coughs> newer members of the commission, that uh, Gary Taylor does an, a first-class job. Susan went last year, where, to Clear Lake? Um, yes, but <clears throat> I've been in the past as well. Yeah, so <coughs> some of us have gone back more than once, and uh, for myself, I can tell you I've learned something every time. It may describe the volume of material that I need to learn, but it, uh, they've, they've been totally worthwhile, well done, and uh, timely. As well as, as discussion with other communities that are present too. Yeah, yeah. a lot of mayors show up, a lot of folks from boards of adjustment, a lot of people from uh, other city councils show up. And, uh, and that's, that's good. Uh, let's see. Can you send that back through again? I certainly can, yep. And if anybody's interested, shoot an email to me, but I'll shoot something out to everybody here at this table tonight so you can review that and then if you're interested in any of those dates and I know the Waterloo date I believe is March 31 that's why I targeted that one it's close and relatively easy to get to so and I, I know I'm registered I believe for the 31st yep or will be yeah you will be carpool too if yep. anyone wanted yeah. to the city will sign you up um, you know <coughs> and if there's more than one we can certainly carpool um, saves everybody some time and hassle that way too so good anything else any other communication? I think that's it. Okay, uh, we're going to move into uh, item number two, public hearing for the rezoning of, uh, let's see, no, no, let's do the right one. Public hearing for special <coughs> provisional use for roof-mounted solar energy panel array at 76th Avenue Northwest, Boston Electric, Inc. of Waterloo on behalf of Nestle Beverage Company at 76th Avenue Northwest is applying for a special provisional use for the construction of a solar array consisting of modules placed on the rooftop at a 30 degree angle. The city code section 100.28 requires a public hearing to be set and conducted by the Planning and Zoning Commission and approval by the City Council for the requested style of solar panel array. Um, any preliminary remarks, Ben, that uh, you want to make at this time, and then we'll open the public hearing? Um, just really quick, I know when we were setting the public hearing, there was some discussion about uh, whether or not we could exempt this. Uh, just go ahead and it sounded like green light it. Well, our code doesn't read that way, so we would need a code revision to do that. Um, so we basically set a public hearing in accordance with the code that we have. Um, and so here we are tonight to here, if anybody has any comments after sending mailings out, putting it in the newspaper uh, per our code requirements in case somebody might have an issue with glare or would like to say something about that. So, We have a representative who's with us this evening. Uh, anything to offer to the commission before they go into their discussion? That's, I'm sorry. That's the two of us on this side, but that's okay. <laughs> and I, no I, I don't believe we have anything additional besides what we, we talked about at Okay. Well, then we will close the public hearing and uh, have some discussion among ourselves. I will just add I did not receive any communication um, about this after sending out the public notices. And actually, more than once. More than once. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> I, th I think this is one of those uh, projects where, uh, in essence, it, it, it is a done deal, but we're working to get everything back on track and... Uh, that that can work. So, how about questions? Have any of you seen it? Mm -hmm. It's barely visible. I drive by it every day. I wouldn't have if we hadn't talked about it. I wouldn't have right. given it a thought. Any others? Well, do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. Okay, I'm going to read it so that it goes in the book correctly. Move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of this roof-mounted solar panel special provisional use request to the City Council. 
Is that good, David? Yep. Okay. Uh, any further discussion? Those in favor indicate yes. 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 Those opposed, no. <coughs> Motion is carried, and uh, we will forward that to City Council. Thanks for coming back. Thank you. Okay, the next public hearing is for rezoning of property at 350 First Avenue Northwest from R4 multiple family residential transitional to C3 Central Business Commercial District. AHTS, AHTS Architects on behalf of Denai. Am I pronouncing Denai correctly? Mike Denai. Denai, okay. Uh, Holdings Inc. at 350 First Avenue Northwest, the site of the former Waverly Shell Rock School District Junior High facility is requesting a zoning change from R4 multifamily transitional to C3 Central Business District commercial. The request stems from a desire to expand the opportunities for uses that are in line with uses customarily found in a commercial zoning designation that would involve residential and other commercial retail and service opportunities out of the existing structure. Uh, ben, any correspondence on this? Um, nothing received to the office after sending out public notices. Okay. And welcome. Would you give us your name and uh, who you're with and then whatever presentation you care to make? I am Andrew Bell with AHTS Architects, representing the owner in this matter. And um, we had a good discussion the last time um, that it was an open case here. Um, I don't have anything to add to the record. Just there's more of you sitting here tonight than were the first time. So if anybody had questions, I'd be happy to answer them. OK. Let's do this. I think the commission is likely to have some questions. Why don't we go into a session, and then we'll come back. And if you can find a way to be comfortable up there and uh, not a problem okay there should be a chair there somewhere. <laughs> good feel like a regular member okay. so questions comments we have something it's yeah we're trying to figure out what this noise there's is there's something playing over here something's what my, my lighting yeah. then there it ended <laughs> oh really significant feedback so it was a voice, though. It did sound like a voice, yeah. I don't hear it now. All right. Folks at home are going to love this. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, ben, uh, give us a, a summary, uh, if you would, of it. Sure. One of the things that, that puzzles me is when I read the application and I see that uh, Mr. Denai wants to move this from the R4 setting to the C3, and the uses that he illustrates as being that which he wants to use it for, why is he doing this? Well, it starts off with um, our zoning code uh, breaks down the R4 and C3 as two distinct uses, land uses. R4, a multifamily residential transitional district by its name is just that. It, it's kind of your uh, transitional area between residential and commercial uses. It allows for uh, multi-tenant occupation for residential. Uh, it allows very limited uh, commercial type applications in this in this district. Um, we have out of the existing structure now we have a gym 24 being operated. I understand that kind of came to be when um, the school still owned the property, negotiated with a listing agent at the time, can they occupy that? And so permission was granted with the condition that should it be finally sold to someone, it would have to come forward for a rezoning so it will be in compliance at that time. And I think it was thought at that time that it was gonna happen soon. Uh, it was being sold, you know, in transition, and then it just sat. And then here we are in 2015, we have a purchaser. So now it's the time to kind of clean that up so that the use can be reflected properly in the C3 district where it's appropriate and permitted. And then you also have the dynamic where the desire, I believe, I don't know if it's a short term, long term, I'm not the owner, so I'll just kind of go by what was provided on the application was they want to do a wrestling camp. 
to utilize the gymnasium and allow uh, students to sleep overnight the way I understood it. And so they're going to retrofit the building for that type of use. And kind of by its nature, it's kind of a boarding house use. If you look at our zoning code, our menu of options, that is permitted as a special provisional <coughs> use under R4. Well, the desire also was instead of going forth for a special provisional use for most any uses in the R4, which are also limited to professional service establishments in our code, which is not retail, it's not you know, it, it arguably is not like any other coffee shop or something like that. So then the desire was to leave the options open. Well, in that case, C3 would probably be the best fit because it could allow, without a special, provision, special provisional use each time you want to open up a business or a enterprise of some kind uh, to kind of match along the C3 central business district, within the C3 designation, you would be permitted to do so after being granted a C3. So I believe the desire is to come forth to say, we wanna do a C3 because it opens up other opportunities, doesn't necessarily limit residential because you can still have it in the upper stories and also allow for a wrestling camp type operation. And then if that goes you know, by the wayside or something else comes up, you don't need a special provision use at that time. And staff did uh, pro, you know, research this in terms of parking a little bit. I'll just kind of address that really quick. R4 uh, would, would require most any parking for most any applications by its district. It's thought of that you need to provide off-street parking. Um, in C3, Central Business District, for a business, you don't need to provide off-street parking. However, for residential applications in C3, you do. So you still would need to anticipate a uh, off-street parking if a permanent residence were to be established at this location. And the goals are numerous for street <coughs> maintenance, snow removal, those type of applications. A couple of questions. So does this, sure. this really covers the whole property, right? Yes, so the entire the junior high property, the whole okay. block. Yes. So <coughs> currently then with a business there, is that out of compliance with R4? Yes. And uh, how, I, I, why is that? It was thought of at the time that the property would transition shortly, so staff said, go ahead. That just seems like a weird loophole in how we run, yeah. you know, make yep. decisions. That, that, that doesn't make sense to me. I have so, another question. Yeah. Were you done? Yeah. You said that C, C3, is it? Yeah. Um, would, li would allow residences above the first floor correct no residences on the first floor you could with a special provisional use in c3 is how we revise our code i think two years ago i think it was okay. you'd have to get that through the board of adjustment so you'd have to well you'd have to go through p and z commission to request it and have a discussion about off-street parking and what is it appropriate to convert a C3 property into residential on the main floor or do you want to reserve it for commercial ventures? So that's kind of a dilemma and, and kind of a, a decision how you shape your downtown area. And isn't 4th Street and surrounding that area, isn't that limited parking right now anyway because of snow removal and et cetera? Isn't that one of the, the streets that is the crowded streets that we were trying to figure out how to alleviate the problem in the first place? Yep. Fourth Street is kind of an arterial collector, right? So it has a lot of through traffic going through it to other places. So yeah. So do they have an idea of where they're going to put all this parking? I don't know if those discussions have taken place. Currently. Um, currently, with the, the uses that were going in, um, which was just providing um, a wrestling camp, I don't believe the uh, the parking that is on street, the angle parking, that's not city parking, I don't believe. It is. That today. one That one is? Okay. Yep, it is. Um, so uh, I would have to investigate the parking situation. It's very early in the conversation. Um, but the reason why we came forward with the zoning is, A, to bring it into compliance with what it already is. And it seemed like something that um, after multiple owners had already gone through since the school let go of it, it needed to be brought forward into compliance or at least have the discussion. Um, down the road, the further conversation can be had about how to get uh, more parking for whatever uses <coughs> are actually intended. Right now we're just trying to open the gates for um, the owner as a developer 
Um, right now he's trying to accommodate this wrestling camp and create opportunities on the first floor um, for, right now he was looking at a martial arts studio. Um, I believe there was another small um, business um, that was looking at it. Um, but everything that, we, every tenant he would have would have to come forward as a special provisional use, which um, would be taxing of um, your system. Um, and not, at that point it questions why it's continuing to stay R4 once it comes forward repeatedly for special provisional circumstances. So we're bringing it forward, not with an end, uh, a specific end and a specific uh, request um, that would incur uh, another parking discussion, but to bring it into compliance and to allow for um, it to be used on the main floor um, for a variety of options um, and preserve the structure. Thank you. I will, I will make a comment. I, I do commend the city staff. I know this probably will surprise Rich, but I do commend them to trying to be, uh, to work with the owner to get something going here because it has had some problems as going through the ownership and everything and to accommodate to have something there and not just a, you know, empty building and it's a good uh, gym and everything. And there is parking that could become available right there north of Walgreens too. I mean, there could be a parking lot put in there. That's owned by the... Yeah, that's owned by the owner there. Mm -hmm. so, it's yeah. that green area just yeah. north of the wall. So, I mean, there is, some, there is something that can there be... There is something that can be done. Mm -hmm. Oh, future, yeah. So, I mean, I, anyway. I guess I just question, how many floors are there in this building? There are three floors. So, approximately how many square feet? How many, how many Each, rooms are you deciding to put into this building after you get it We're keeping the, uh, the existing layout, um, okay. but... The, uh, the third, the second floor that's um, being um, potentially transitioned into this camp um, would have 11 classrooms that would become dormitories. Um, I've not been um, told exactly how many people are occupying it um, as far as the, uh, what the class intends, um, but as a, uh, from a code standpoint, it just looks at how many people could physically fit per fire codes in there. Um, there's no in tension of using this many, but it could, uh, I believe, fit um, around 150 people. But it's just not trying to uh, bring those people actually into there. It's just when you divide the square foot by the, um, the code prescription, it's 150 people in that floor. And, and I guess one follow-up that I might have that might be relevant is, have you had conversation with the inspector then, uh, building inspector yes. that is kind of... He's reviewing plans okay. currently um, to just um, transition the second floor wholesale um, with uh, minor modifications to uh, all fire alarm systems, um, sprinklers, um, things like that for life safety, but very little in the way of um, construction and a demolition of the existing structure. That's part of our goal is to save what we consider a resource and what is contributing to the historic district, allowing that to transition to future uses um, without closing doors. So if you put residences and, and businesses in there, you're gonna have to supply X amount of parking spaces per resident, and then you're gonna have to supply X amount of parking spaces for commercial as well, true? The, the residence, yes, uh, it's basically per bedroom is kind of the prescription our parking menu goes through. If it's a one bedroom, one off street, two, I believe it's two off street. And so I think, and then for any commercial venture in the C3 district, you technically are not, you know, you're not obligated to do that. It's obviously an important question to ask, you know, the traffic pattern around this, where do they park? And what you're going to find, I think, is a lot of businesses are open like an eight to five kind of schedule. Mm -hmm. Whereas the residential, they're going to be overnight parking. So that probably would be arguably a more of a demand than a business district when they're there 8 to 5, but for what it's worth. We just have to have a traffic to accommodate the buses from that come down around through there from St. Paul's. That's the big thing that you have to, to realize, I think. that's and I, you know, And I know the architect maybe, and then maybe the owner can negotiate that a little bit too. And I know as staff, we're obviously aware of that. Um, you we know. had that discussion when we did the fairway concern at that time. Yeah. I've had conversations in the past for, for what it's worth with the, uh, um, uh, the person in charge of the, the fleet management and routes uh, not necessarily for St. Paul's but I know for the school district and they're they're very accommodating as far as saying well just kind of let, let them know what's going on they can kind of work with that you know I mean they can work with that too so try to find the best route so what's on the table Ben is not just the block 
that the junior high is in, but also the parking lot? Is the, is the parking lot included? I'm talking about the strip just north of uh, Walgreens. Well, the strip just north of Walgreens, ironically, is zoned to C3. Uh, I don't know if that was an error on the map, but it, it is included within the zoning district, so technically it's official. It's like it is. colored as a, uh, yep. as a transitional or a mixed use. Oh, right, yep. Okay. But the current zoning of that strip area that we're talking to just on Walgreens is, is, C3. is C3, so okay. we're just focused on just the block of okay. the Good. junior high building with the grass area around it. Yeah. What about other questions? We really have two, two questions in front of us. One is currently transitional zoning. I have to believe that when that zoning was assigned to it, that was well thought out. And we've always wrestled with, do we spot zone? And transitional is for from commercial to residential. I believe that everything I've heard, yes, it requires special provisional use approval, but that's the system we have and everything that we've talked about fits in the current R4. So I think we have to address and discuss, should it stay R4? Then the next part of the question is not, do we immediately go to C3, but is what is then the correct zoning designation? I have some real concerns about C3 because there is no parking requirement. And you may tell me today that my best intention is I'm just going to do this, but I tell you folks, if we make it C3 or we make it C2, we can put a restaurant on the first floor, a nice coffee shop on the first floor, and they can be open until midnight. When we assign a designation to it, and that's what we've got, and just because today I'm going to tell you that I'm going to do wrestling camps doesn't mean that that's what I'm going to do in five years or even five months. So we have to ask ourselves, is it currently zoned properly? And if not, should it be C2, C3? What should it be? And I think we need to have that, that discussion. To me, um, to say that a building of this magnitude with a myriad of of uses that are potential for it, be it restaurants, uh, bar, we don't have enough of those in town. Um, <laughs> inside the code is a whole list of things that are allowed in C2 and C3. That's what we're approving, not just a wrestling camp. And when I went to wrestling camp, you know, we went for a week and we all came in cars. And if you can fit 150 kids, eh, that's a lot of cars, folks. And we're wishing it upon a neighborhood, especially if we don't then require parking. So I think well, we- It's already struggling with parking. And it's already struggling. So I think we need to uh, approach this carefully. It's not just a question of, uh, yes, it's nice to uh, be cooperative, but we're doing something for the next decade or two yeah you're, you're right a little bit but economically is it feasible I mean you start talking about these other things I mean do you really think it's economically feasible to see something like that a restaurant a yeah bar restaurant yeah. bar and you you go around to all sorts of buildings that have been repurposed and you find small coffee shops, you find antique stores, you find uh, restaurants, we may have the next Hooters over there. Uh, that's what the uh, zoning will allow. And I think we need to know that. Do we want that in the neighborhood? There are nearly 60 illustrations of the kinds of businesses that can go into a C3 uh, designation. And it's everything from an auto repair shop, uh, you sell tires there, you can put in laundry, um, you sell furniture. I mean, it's, it really, it, it opens up, uh, it opens up the commercial uh, world. And to not require <laughs> parking and parking capabilities, 
I just don't think is right. Um, yeah, I don't we'll think it should be a C3. Again. That's the problem. We'll be coming back to the same problem once, you know, let's say the camp doesn't go and like you said, you start getting more businesses in there. And we won't be allowed to address it anymore because it's already zoned C2 or C3 or, or whatever. So I, I think the special provisional use and letting uh, that board do their job, after all, <laughs> they don't meet all that often, um, isn't, isn't a bad idea because they can take a look at the use, the intent, the parking, and the whole thing and determine if it's appropriate or not. If we just swing the door open, it's open and propped open. I'd like, like to make sure we hear from everybody. Just or, the... Yeah, sorry, please, Kate. The, the gym that's in there now, the club, gym 24, whatever it's called, that's already been granted provisional use? Is there no. No, it, what happened is the property was in transition. The school owned the property. It was listed with an agent. and So if we don't recommend this... And it stays R4, transitional district, now that it's actually changed hands, they would have to go through the process of getting a special yes, provision. Yes, I would argue that, use. yes. And is that particular the, use. What's that? Or any use. Well, in the R4 district, um, it allows a very you know, a list of about 10, 15 uses that you could apply for a special provisional use. So it's not, you know, um, a re, you know, it's not like a restaurant. Well, but, but the uses like, that are planned right now, the the gym, they'd have to do it because it's... G gym would be a use that is listed as a club, for example. You could argue that's a club recreational area. So you could argue that's probably special provisional use because it makes sense that people are going to gather there and use it. So And the yeah. wrestling, the boarding house use... The boarding house use, again, special provisional use in R4. Yep. But if they make it into residences? If they make it into residences, they do not need a special provisional use, but they have to meet the off-street parking right, right. requirements. I, I understand. Allowing, that's just code. Allowing turnkey. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's just code compliance. That's code, yeah. But we, we don't necessarily tie the off Well, actually, let me take a step back. We would look at the off-street parking requirement for, you know, the, the club use. However... That's, you know, one of those, okay, you know, and that, that's part of the special provisional use discussion. You have the ability to waive that or to enforce that. Mm -hmm. You could say, mm, maybe not all that parking is required, maybe half that, because it's a special provisional use. You could put some conditions based on the circumstance. So a little flexibility, but you still have to adhere to the code, if that makes sense. You can go above and beyond, but you can't be less restrictive. Less restrictive. May I interject? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, ben, could you read off for us what the um, special provisional uses are for that would, uh, I'm looking at the first floor yep. as far as the use of it as um, a semi-commercial yep. type of use. Personal service establishment. Um, let's see, professional service basically means um, primarily engaged in providing services which involve the advising and counseling of clients and confidence concerning personal, financial, or medical affairs. Clear as mud? But essentially it's kind of by appointment. The goal here is kind of an eight to five by appointment, but it's not limited to eight to five. So maybe they have advising at nine o'clock at night. I don't know, but that's listed. Then you go to gardening establishment, business service establishment. And a business service is basically one that caters to businesses, that provides copy services or something like that. Um, retail establishments, but it only lists two. Basically related to artworks or craft works. Basically, <coughs> if you're creating something, you could offer it for sale. That's very limited retail. That's about it. You couldn't sell clothes. Oh, you could probably sell clothing you make, but you couldn't sell reselling clothing so then you allow any school and then you go into what's already provided in r3 which is a hospital nursing home clinic uh, as in hospital clinics boarding houses clubs fraternities sororities religious institution including libraries um, um, utilities child care facilities and institutions that's r3 right 
which carries over to the R4 as a special provisional use. <coughs> So really, it's a, I mean, with special provisional use, there's a wide range of businesses that can still utilize that space. It's not extremely restrictive, except there's a process that people will have to go through to get use of it. Is that? It's matching up what the desire is to what the code allows for, and then working with, you know, kind of the architect and, and the, the mainly the owner to say, the owner wants to do this, does the code provide for it, and what's the mechanism to make it happen? So usually, right, call public hearing, review what's proposed, and usually demonstrating how maybe parking needs to be addressed. And that's going to be <coughs> the purview of the PNZ Commission to have that discussion. Um, but none of the things that are planned currently would be rejected under the R4. No, but they would have to come back to say, we I want understand to do that. this. To and, then, and then the, the, hic <clears throat> the hiccup could be, you know, with the zoning designation, it's up to the commission, is parking needed or is it appropriate at that point? Mm -hmm. I guess the parking is a big factor here. That well, because as staff, I mean, we are kind of hard pressed not to enforce it under the R4. You have to enforce it. And usually it's based on square footage of what the use is. Whereas the R3, you're permitted to, to do a retail or service without the parking because it's kind of a a secondary commercial center is kind of the purpose of a C3 central business. You have the main street, and now we have the fourth street uh, corridor being developed. You know, we have some on 10th Avenue. So those are kind of, uh, so fourth street would be a C2 general commercial. Then you have the C3, which is kind of, you're trying to maintain some, some semblance of a character of a true downtown, Midwest downtown feel. So then the question is, does this fit with that or not? I mean, that's up to the PNZ Commission a little bit. Did I answer your question? Okay. With both boarding houses, clubs, and even recreational areas are <clears throat> all listed here as uh, special provisional uses that are approved, uh, I really think that it's in the right, right place right now. I was under the impression that it couldn't remain where it was. Uh, the but I thought C3 the, was needed for its current, to make it compliant with what it, is currently being used as. I believe, well, the C3 was going to be needed if some flexibility was desired to say, well, now we want to do this because that fell through or, you know. It kind yeah, of, as far as yeah. operating with right. the tenants in mind, allowing tenants to come in without a, a right. month and a half lead time every time they. Right. And then, yeah, they'd have to tell a tenant, well, we got to go to the public hearing. So for the gym uh, business that's there, they would have to come back yep. for with a request for special provisional use yep. if it stayed as R4. Yep. yep. But the boarding house concept could go in if the parking is dealt with. Yes. Well, and if I'm understanding correct, it's the parking concern that's the primary. If If the parking concern were taken care of, others would be more comfortable allowing the C... Three, two, if I'm understanding Rich's main concern. Rich is more concerned that a loud bar might go in there. Well, I, that's just an example of what is approved as a C2 or a C3. In my opinion, if it is changed from R4, my recommendation would be C2, because there the owner still has responsibility for off-street parking and isn't going to... Um, Bring, be able to bring in 150 uh, kids in cars and put them in Walgreens. You've got to have So again, parking. if the parking was taken care of, C2, C3, as long as there's parking taken care of, you don't really object to C3. Well, C2 C3 by its definition doesn't require off-street parking. Well, I'm just saying if it were taken care of, though, then it wouldn't matter. Yes. You're saying C2 to force the parking issue. Correct or R4 to parse, force the parking issue right. to be addressed. C3. So it's the parking issue that's the main concern. Right, and the fact is it can become a restaurant, a bar, or whatever mm -hmm. in C2 or in C3. But if we give them car blanche C3, there's no not a whole lot of additional mm -hmm. skin in the game. Mm -hmm. I think that's wrong. Future. And we're growing at what capacity then? Didn't you do a study on that? Uh, how many people are moving too way early? Well, I did. I don't have that. In front of oh, me. <laughs> I was going to say, I know it's a couple thousand each year or something. 
It's not quite that. Not that? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe average in 10% a year. About 10% a yeah. year. About 100. And you, what, what would, if, I mean, would, if, would Mike put in parking in that strip north of Walgreens if that was a matter of getting the, the, the other designation? I can approach the owner with that. He was under the impression that it was um, already C3 and using it as C3, and then it, was, it came forward. Somebody that he knew um, brought up that um, this was not the case, um, and we were operating under the assumption that um, it was being used as it was allowed to be used, so we had to revisit the issue. I'm just thinking if, we're, if we could come to some kind of consensus here that if, it, if they want C3 and seems to be the parking, that area, you know, could hold quite a few cars if mm -hmm. that was mm -hmm. accomplished. Uh, the, the, I would caution a little bit about, because the C3 by its nature doesn't, Allow for parking, you would almost have to like do like a zoning agreement of some kind, or maybe a development agreement outside of the, you know, maybe in the minutes discussion. I you know, recommend that no, a development agreement be tied to that rather than we don't want to do a zoning agreement because we did that once. Um, and it's it, so, in other words, you have the zoning and then you're trying to restrict them a little further with what you're already, you know, permitted. So it's it's clumsy. I would I prefer to find the right zoning district rather than a zoning agreement, to be so honest. A development agreement can be had that will take care of that, but if it comes to getting a consensus that the commission can come to an agreement on, plus the, the owner, uh, you know, then I think that's where we got to. So, so what I'm hearing is the, the commission, well, your, your seat may be just suggesting that maybe a development agreement of some kind be in concert with the C3. C3. Yeah, I mean, if that's where Michael wants to go to, then, you know, if he's comfortable with the other, you know, um, it's still going to have to have parking, so it's going to one way or the other, but I, it's really dependent upon where he wants to go, either C3 or, or um, um, R4. Um, and and it'd be parking either way. If it was C3, then it has to have a development agreement attached to the property. But what's the difference between a development agreement with C3 and a C2 designation? The, the C2 designation would, uh, would make them <coughs> put in parking at the prescribed rate. And isn't that the same thing as some kind of a development agreement? Yeah, I, that's what I'm advocating. I think it's a little cleaner because you don't need to worry about a develop. Because in a sense, you could probably argue too in, in thinking about this a little bit more is the development agreement could function as a zoning agreement too. So it's a lot cleaner and neater not to say we want it as a C3 if, you know, if the thought is, well, maybe a C2 would be appropriate. <coughs> you know, one thing to think about too is does the C2 designation fit with the scope and the intent of the code too? Mm -hmm. Is it a good blend between land uses and, and how to, you know, but it does force the hand with parking. So are, are there any restrictions to the property owner here in terms of the kinds of businesses that could go into a C2 versus the C3? No. I think part of the issue is that, um, yes, this owner does own that space between Walgreens and the, um, and the property in question, um, but should that not be the case, there wouldn't be a, a way to there's a small corner in the northwest side that could uh, handle some parking on site. So um, if this went to a C2, he would own property that is both C2 and C3. Well, no. If if this was C2 and he and the parking lot ability was lost, if that other piece was sold, there wouldn't be a way to provide the parking that C2 would require. You couldn't actually make the parking be in the C2 district. There isn't enough space is what you're saying. Yeah. But, and, and that would be a question, you know, you could put parking space in C3, <coughs> you know, if that's, mm -hmm. but, but, right. So a little yeah. confusing, but, so if the junior high building were rezoned property to a C2, you have the C3 property next to Walgreens to the south, you could put required parking in that C3. And correct, if there's not enough room, you know, in that grassy area next to the junior high, you know, be between the sidewalk and the junior high building, then you could, right, then you could put it there. I think Mr. Bell's point is that you don't know that the current owner is going to retain ownership of the property north of. And if it, if it becomes C2 and it, um, any, most of the uses underneath C2 require off-street parking, 
the, the site doesn't really allow for it um, to create it within itself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, there's small opportunities in the northwest side, like I mentioned, but... Mm -hmm. Creatively, the northwest side, the southeast side, and all along the east side could be angular parking. Cutting up some of... Yes, okay. Take, with curb cut. No, there, there's, there's yeah. space there that a creative developer can figure out that one. Okay. Like in the aerial view that I'm looking at? Mm -hmm. where the subject property is, is this all green space right here around to the corners? Yeah. This is green. So this, this is, is green. what you can make into this parking? This is green. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Hey, Andrew, have yes. you tested the number of parking spaces that might be required in the worst case scenario with the property? We have not at the moment. Would it be really C2A since it isn't up on the, you know, it's got the setback, then we create C2A, it would be a setback from the sidewalk. Yeah, what's the difference between C2A and C2A? Yeah, I created that one, Godfathers, years ago. I think it's when that happened. Because it essentially says if you have a lot that's small and you can't accommodate parking, that's a C2A. It's kind of a subset of C2. And so what are you supposed to do with the parking? You get a, <laughs> you get a, you get a pass? Well, didn't they buy a lot across the street and do mm -hmm. what we were just discussing? Yeah, they, they did. Okay. To the west. Yeah, that's where that well the, the well what it does is it pushes back your front yard setbacks instead of like a 50 foot down to like 10 so you're allowed flexibly for the actual building pad site but as far as off street parking I don't know if it really helps you though to be frank it just yeah, that's what, see that that lot across the street there that little it used to be a um, gas station there it was created a parking to accommodate what was going on on Godfather's mm-hmm came out of at that time. There was only about, that time I think it was the only piece that was. Street. Or, I think, we're coming at this a little sideways from my side because we were just asked to look at some of the life safety considerations, what it would take to allow a wrestling camp um, to <coughs> occupy the second floor. So. At that point, we were looking at um, a very curtailed code discussion of his uh, life safety features within the building um, and not so much a full building scale plan and development and architectural set um, for renovation. So um, it, it came secondly that um, with further discussions that he wanted us to investigate the zoning and things outside of our original agreement about looking into life safety. So apologize if I'm not up on the, the full parking discussion. Just it's question. just Yeah, we would have investigated it had <coughs> our scope of services been a little broader um, with what he was intending to have us retained for. <laughs> ben or any of you, you know, back uh, in 2011, when we created the current uh, land use map, uh, we put this into a transitional category, and I don't think we just did it because we couldn't figure it out, but there were things going on within the community at that time that said that's probably a, an appropriate way to handle this property. The property was, I think, sold by that time. It was being listed. I know there was a contract to purchase, but I don't think it was actually executed from the school district. At it that was time. 2012, I think, was the last year it was used. Okay. And, you know, we, we, we were hearing... No, 2011. In, it was about that time. Well, we were hearing in the city that, you know, there were lots of uh, things that were being proposed as to what could be done with, with the uh, junior high school building. And so I think a lot of, of our putting it into this transitional zone was that we just really didn't know how it was going to be. And approached. you wanted to allow flexibility to yeah. let the area develop as, you know, the interest went, huh? Is, I was serving on the, the chamber board at that time, and, and there was a lot of developers that have gone through not only the, the CUNA building downtown here, but the junior high. And, and to offer flexibility at that time, kind of like what we did with the transitional district, we ended up carving, we have the historic Main Street district, and we ended up carving that property into the Main Street district to allow for grants, which would be 
than probably more for a commercial use. Um, we were looking at low rent housing. Um, um, Wasn't there a senior project proposed senior, at one yeah, point? Yeah, hotel. And, yeah. Um, things that you know we've had other projects go on in the community to accomplish some of those things, but um, you know just to try to be as creative as possible. Um, but it, it was a struggle. I mean, there's a lot of investment that has to be put into the old junior high. So, you know, I, I, I kind of to, to Dave's point, I mean, I kind of echo it, it's great that we're trying to be flexible with it. We just don't know what that future tenant's going to be, um, you know, whether it's a wrestling camp and what's it going to be a year from now. So um, I don't know what the right solution is. Is it a true statement that by staying with R4 and the uh, option for special provisional use, that on the one hand, it does offer some flexibility to however this piece of property develops, but it offers also some control over how that ultimately uh, develops uh, in, in a way that we don't know at this point. So, so the only thing that would limit in the R4, kind of keeping it as is essentially, would be your retail, other than items you create for sale, would be nil. Uh, you couldn't have a restaurant. You couldn't have um, a bar. You couldn't have, um, you know, some things you may see within the Main Street area, but you could have, right, those special provisional uses that we listed off earlier. So if you're, you know... I just want to be true and accurate with that is to say that retail that typically you're going to attract people and they probably you're going to generate traffic and parking you know where are they going to park in the C3 there's been attempts by the city to create you know public parking lots for that venture too so then it's kind of that discussion too is this the right time for this and I know working with uh, fielding the call initially with hey we're going to do a wrestling camp okay well let's look at that we looked at our code and kind of said well that really is more um you can look at it two ways. Yes, in the R4, special provisional use, okay? And then the C3 district, you could also argue that's permitted, but then you don't have the off-street parking requirement with it either, and then you allow flexibility because I don't know if they've finalized what the rest of the building's going to hold, and, and I think they found that a little more attractive to apply for the C3, and that's why you know they're presenting it through Andrew here tonight. So with that being said, I think everything else is accurate that's been said. Ben, can you craft a special provi uh, special provisional use for multiple use for multiple uses? Like if we just carved off, it would allow for boarding um, clubs. Uh, yep. Could you name off limit it, but name multiple so that you yeah. don't have to come back? I, I would recommend putting those on and you know let the applicant review the menu and actually select what they wish. Yeah. Maybe you know maybe with a higher retainer, it's, generate it's, some plans to show how it could work. I mean, that'd be my recommendation because you would have kind of an off-street dynamic to parking we'd want to look at and investigate, and that's really kind of up to the owner what they're ready to propose right now, you know, so you could. How does but I would recommend all if, at once. If the use changes and then they want to come back and do another. Well, like, <coughs> I believe you have, once you granted a special provisional use, I don't think you have to apply it. You mean if you granted it but you don't do it, then you do something else? No, I'm or? sorry. So if the use changes still permissible okay. so but they have to come back if same owner same, same owner. owner has to come back to apply for the next provision can you have multiple provisional uses on one property yes. or are you just mm -hmm. yes okay. yeah and then that's kind of the the idea too is that you're trying to calculate the demand or the impact of having multiple uses out of a r4 transitional property like, you know, okay, so we have this type of use and this type of use. What's the traffic demand going to be for that versus this? Each one's a little different, too. I think that's the intent of the code is kind of the, you know, kind of menuize those and itemize them. And, and I think ultimately what will happen is, you know, they're probably going to rethink what, what, what do we really want to do and try to find the best approach for that. And I think their attempt, too, is to find the catch-all with the C3, which seems appropriate, you know, from staff perspective, too, because you're allowed the menu of options. Um, and from that reason, you know, that's why staff was kind of saying, well, a C3 could do that for you. No off-street parking, but keep in mind, you know, parking in this area, I mean, it's, it is what it is. I mean, it's, 4th Street is relatively busy, too. Something to keep in mind. 
then it puts you on the hot seat a bit, but what's, what's the upside for the city, for the, for the neighborhood? And conversely, what's, what's the downside for the city and the neighborhood? Well, I think if we go ahead with the proposal the way it is. Well, I mean, the upside would be the property would be maintenance. It would be renovated to a certain degree, I would think. You know, maybe some rehab would happen, maybe a little more security around the facility uh, rather than where it is today with its current state because there would be an interest in maintaining, you know, kind of the integrity of the building security. Um, that would be the upside. Um, the downside would be that um, I think the building may sit kind of as is, um, other than the Gym 24, which may come back again through a special show use if whatever happens. But, I mean, that realistically could be the only alternative is what you see is what you get today, you know, if the C3 doesn't. There's a large hurdle here with the, the building as it stands, not just on the zoning, but because of fire safety um, and current codes, even with uh, using existing building code that's a little nicer to existing structures. Um, with the size of the building, even if you don't intend to use a lot of spots within it, um, you, you quickly need to um, have um, sprinklers put in specifically the, the wrestling camp, even just the wrestling camp, if you have a residential on the second floor, which is what wrestling, a boarding house type of use falls under, um, immediately triggers the sprinklers. If you use the basement gym in any way, because of the distance from uh, any open, like the outside, the basement gym, the old gym, immediately triggers sprinklers just by its configuration. So um, any development within that building is gonna automatically trigger um, a major upgrade which uh, will keep the building as a historic piece alive for um, some time to come. And it's um, applying for some um, tax credits um, towards uh, historic preservation um, to help put in some of the, the uh, life safety components that go along with that structure. So uh, as far as the building staying around, if the community wants it to stay, um, getting these credits and allowing some of this flexibility of use on the first floor is a way that you'll see it used again rather than sitting. I have a question going back to, to Bill's question earlier. If I Maybe I didn't understand it correctly. Is it possible to apply for the provisional use but have it be kind of like a blanket one? Like they could pick, we want provisional use for these four types of businesses. <coughs> so really in a way it is kind of possible to make it be somewhat of a commercial district so every new renter wouldn't have to be or every new tenant wouldn't have to come back here I, I would probably recommend that you know if 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 an owner were to say hey i'm interested in these four uses i don't have anybody really lined up yet but i'm really interested in those that's the time to actually propose that i would argue the way the city of waverly works and some communities do too is that these are the uses I want to do. Each use has its own impact for parking, hours of use. I mean, they're a little different, but they're all kind of intended to be reviewed first because they understand the nature of the setting of a transitional property, too. That would alleviate a lot of the hurdles that we've been talking about as far as getting the new tenants, not making them have to wait another six weeks or whatever it may take. And, and so the, the menu is limited, though, on special provisional use. Right. That's the down, downfall for an owner. So hence the request for a C3, which is kind of what staff had said. Well, if you're interested in allowing flexibility for, you know, commercial, you know, I'd highly recommend that because I think then you would at least get it out there that this is the menu of options. And, and you're correct. With the C3, there's no parking. With the R4, there is. So then you're looking at trying to balance, too, the value of the building and maintenance and a use that's coming forward that would be permitted under C3. So that's not an easy position to be in either. Uh, but I'm here to help, I mean, help you figure out the question so you find the right conclusion as you see fit, so. Since the request was going from R4 to C3, is it, you know, say, to accommodate this wrestling camp, could it, could, since this is a public hearing, we couldn't go ahead and, and approve um, the special provisional use for the Gym 24 and the and the boarding house thing so they could move forward to what path. what one thought it well you'd have to have a public hearing again to ask to specifically public. for that use i mean because people understand it could be a c3 use 
But if you say, well, now we want to allow it for special provisional use, well, you got to kind of declare that and give them the opportunity. That's I'm how trying our to see if there's anything we can yeah. accommodate tonight. Well, to I, I would just keep them going forward. If, if that's how you feel, I would, you know, as a chair, I would recommend, or as a commissioner, I would recommend, you know, recommend to you that you say formally, hey, I think that's a good idea. Have, you know, I move that we, you know, recommend a certain way and that add an extra comment that re would recommend the owner do something. The other like thing I'd ask for a special provisional use. Remind the commission if that's the will. We're a recommending body, and uh, we can vote however we vote, but we can also put a recommendation to the city for additional consideration for something like the. Uh, so so so, so my go, thought is let's come back to another public hearing though to get it, would, it yep. before it actually gets goes to the yep. recommendation goes to the. Um, yep. So the what's council. the advantage of tying both two together? I mean. Tying what together? Sorry. Uh, with oh, the gym 24 and the boarding because those are the two things that right now that they're needing. right. But needing. if it has to be a special provisional use anyway, just come back with a request. <coughs> we'll set. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I'm we just trying to get it, public public keep it moving. Keep it. Public yeah. Meeting. No, I know, but keep it going so we could say, okay, if that's where they want to go, then we can get it going forward. That the he can set the public hearing for next meeting. Well, they can do that. But day. wouldn't we want to recommend to them? perhaps maybe a C2 so that the parking is covered? I mean, it if you're going to go C3, give them the carte blanche that they want with the flexibility, but no. If we go R4, leave it R4. With a special provisional use, they'll have to do parking. They have to do parking. Yeah. Okay. yeah. And then if they someday they want to change it to a C2, they'll have to come back. But I mean, I mean, I, I think I'm reading that they, we would, C2 or C3 would not fly right now. Mm -hmm. And so I'm trying to keep them moving forward to with what they really want to do and then if that's where it's where everybody's in agreement we can get it going so i'm just trying to come to a consensus here so we can accommodate the short term the property need. owner for the short-term need like you say and then if they want to go come back later for something else they can they that's can more do broad that. and more longer term here, focus. here is here is one just point to remember is that the applicant you know, as an owner, they, they can withdraw their application after tonight's outcome. Recommend approval denial to the council. That's my recommendation you do tonight, okay, on this request specifically so we can kind of move it off center. Um, and the owner can withdraw and then reapply for a special provisional use. They have that right. And so with the, you know, the upcoming meeting in February, which is relatively short, I mean, unless they want to wait a little bit, I mean, that could, you know, save them a little bit of time. I know they've waited a little more time because of the snowstorm we encountered, but um, what, that's what, my recommendation. What do you need for notification on a special provisional use? A week? Yeah, yeah, at least one week in so advance. So we we will meet again on February the fifth. Yes, first Thursday in February. So which is only that, two weeks that, away. Yeah, two weeks from tonight. Okay. So I'd say let's do this. Let's settle the question first. Let's take a vote on the question. And then, depending on how that goes, we can take one of the alternatives and looking at uh, ways to go about the special provisional use or... Uh, well, that'd be a negative motion because I think we'd have to, you have to deny this request, so it's a, you know... Well, I think, I well think, you move that you recommend to city council, then you just vote no, if you don't, yeah. supportive of or it. You could you or do. you could just... I don't do it for lack negative. of a motion. <laughs> or, so, or you just turn around and make a motion to deny this and then move forward with a, instead of having a, a negative vote, I mean a, a no vote, just that you're recommending to deny this and then that ends this. They pull their um, uh, application, put a new application in for the next meeting to turn around for a special provisional use for the two or three whatever items they want and then it's, it's done. I, you know, you can have a no if, vote or you if they, motion if to they deny. Choose. Yeah. And then this could die for lack of motion too, but that's up. Well, it can either die of lack of motion or we can defeat the motion as written or can we present a different motion? I, uh, we can do both of the last two. Yep. And I, I, would, I would make motion that planning and zoning Deny approval of this rezoning request at 350 First Avenue and Northwest property as des as described from R4 to C3 to City Council. That wasn't one of the first or the last two that you said. No, that was a new motion. What, what? I second it. That's, that's it's a motion, motion is on the floor. I'll second it. 
It was deny it, not recommend it. You, you can make that motion. What I was suggesting is if we vote on the motion before us, if it, if it is successful, it goes ahead. If it's not successful, then bring that motion into, into play. Because your motion presumes that it is going to be denied or that it is denied. And so people would have to vote in reverse in order to untangle, untangle that. Am I making any sense? Yes. Mm -hmm. We have to deny it first, and then he. Can. We could do it with one motion, and we'll have two. <laughs> That's what you were trying to do. I second the motion. I, I, know, I know. There's a motion on the floor. Okay. Which I can, which I, which I'll withdraw if, if I'm not a, too confused at this point. <laughs> <laughs> my, my thinking, Rich, is that the, the owner deserves an up or down vote on the proposal they've made, but we can then make a motion that we think will assist them in coming forward with the, uh, the suggestion of going with the special provisional use. It, it, gives them, it gives them a way that they'll know they have some, support, some degree of support on going into it. And, and, do we and need a motion for that? Why do we need may, to do I, that? Yeah, may, may I just interject? I, I don't necessarily agree that we need to include that in the motion itself because I know it was stated, and I'll make the minutes reflect that. I know Andrew is here and heard everything. Um, and so I'm happy to include those in the minutes as I heard them. Um, unless you feel they weren't and then you want them clarified, then I think it's appropriate to include them in the motion. But I, I, I'm clear on that. I don't, I don't I'm have sorry any problem with that. Okay. No. You, you have a motion that's still on the floor that is to deny approval. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't that happen if we just did a vote and everybody said no? That's true, too. Mm -hmm. I, I, I will. Just to try not to risk it. <laughs> that, too. <laughs> I, I will rescind my motion if the second will do the same. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I will then make motion to, uh, to recommend approval. <laughs> <laughs> I am confused. Let, let, let's read this one in the way it needs to go in the record. Can I ask a question? Though? Please. I mean, it feels wrong to have anyone make a motion if they feel against it. I mean, that, I mean, to me, that's what's hard is for Commissioner Dane to make a motion that he He's disagrees just it on with. the table. Okay. Yeah. So, so the goal here is to put it on the table uh, so that it can be voted yay or nay mm -hmm. or yes or no based on how, from your seat, you know, you see this application and the discussion. And he can still vote no. Correct. And I, I get that. I it just feels it contrary to, and, and it does. That's why it was You're correct. the other yeah. <laughs> I felt comfortable the other way. Exactly. This just feels, it does feel and, awkward. It feels awkward. And one of the so. things we do as a commission, which maybe we should no longer do, is we tend to have our motions made after we have all of our discussion. In other words, instead of discussion, discussing the motion that's on the table while we're having the discussion, we wait till, till it's all over, and then we, we make the motion and vote it up or down. And that would, that would take care of the, uh, the circumstance I think you're trying to address, Rich. I didn't know I was, but. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know that you'd want to make a motion before you had discussion. I mean, we're, we're I like it this way. <laughs> and let's Even just, I rarely. I call the question. <laughs> read that off. I call the question. <laughs> Let, let's read the motion since it wasn't read. Uh, the, the motion that's before us, and Rich, you're going to have to correct this if you're not clear with it. Uh, move that the Planning and Zoning Commission recommend approval of this rezoning request at 350 First Avenue Northwest property as described from R4 to C3 to the City Council. Uh, we're going to do a roll call on it, then. Okay. Anderson? No. Bagelman? No. Dane? No. Frankie? No. User? No. Olson? No. Payne? No. Solheim? No. Wilson? Do we even have a second? Yeah, you second. I thought. I thought I did. Oh, so we we reread the motion in the language, yeah. mm -hmm. so it was to approve. Okay, and I'll say no. 
Thank you. So the uh, recommendation is no to city council. Okay. And you're going to make the minutes of this meeting available? Yes. Mr. Bell and any anything else that we want for the record on this? You know, and this can be off the record. I'm just curious. <laughs> but I think, well, that's true. I mean, I think I, I would like to make sure we're in agreement to giving him direction so that that, he doesn't come back and get turned down again. Yeah, I mean, if, if we're all comfortable coming back yeah. with a special use or provisional use of the two or three items mm -hmm. that they have uh, that they would like to go with, um, if we're all kind of in agreement, I, I mean, I don't want to have him do all the work and then get sent back in. again. Yeah. When so, is the wrestling camp? I should have asked that earlier and not that we're that? off the record. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I was kind of curious that, myself. What? It, how many days out of the year are we considering this wrestling camp? And how? What are the, the summer ages months? And just, so, oh, three months was, out yeah. of the year. I didn't think it was very yes. clear. I is mean, it uh, a numbers or anything? Yeah, is it college or is it high school? It, high what, school. What is it? Oh, junior high too, or no? Are they do junior From high? my understanding, it's high school student or high school students age, um, approximately thirty students for I believe three months out of the year. So, so not the we're, hundred we're talking about. Yeah. And we have so we're worried about 150 is simply spots. the square foot divided I by. I don't, I, I, I don't understand. We have RAs to um, they make yeah. it easy to get the special provision. <laughs> and stuff like that. They'd have stuff like that, the parents. Okay. So when we, we talked about that, though, are we also then, with the caveat of be sure to address parking? when they come back for provisional use, that, well, that that would be something to... Well, I mean, that that's going to be up to, I think, mm -hmm. Andrew Bell and the owner to talk to, I think, is, is, is talk about is because that came up during discussion, and I'm pretty sure you heard kind of the concerns yeah, and kind of the gist of the discussion. The direction seemed to be either this than that. apply for C2 and um, try your hand, um, which would include in itself to uh, um, look into parking situations or applying for special provisional use or uses as mm -hmm. we've discussed as a joint package, um, which would have attendant um, parking discussion with it also. And, and limited to the scope of just we'll the special limit, provisional yes. uses. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Especially mm -hmm. since that area is so distraught with parking. It's already cool. <laughs> anything, <laughs> anything else? I'm moved by your confusion. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, is there anybody that's really against that end of it? No. no. Does that give you some Absolutely. Ideas? Thank you, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you very much. By the way, Andrew's mother served on this commission for mm -hmm. eight years or so, I think. I'm sure she was a character. <laughs> <laughs> she had her was. moments. <laughs> she was my mentor. <laughs> okay. Um, Regular business, uh, we have a rental ordinance update from staff, and as soon as Ben's finished, we'll uh, take a look at that. It was presented to council in December of last year with comments from the council addressed. And they'll be shared okay. yep. on that rental thing. Yep, so the rental ordinance uh, was approved on the 19th uh, by the city council. Um, so staff right now is finalizing all the registration forms. Um, hopefully those will be ready to go by Feb those will be ready to go by February 1 uh, we're going to open it up to registration um, we're going to provide self checklists um, we're going to community development office um, is going to be the responsible office overseeing this program um, so it's going to be uh, the first of its kind in the city of Waverly um, so I believe we're just going to learn a lot, I think, when the applications start coming in, when we're processing things, um, as far as the condition of housing. My hunch is a lot of the housing is going to be good, and there's going to be some that isn't good. Um, so I think with that being said, um, I think we're going to move forward, and uh, we're waiting to unveil the registration forms to get people in our office to register. Um, and I don't think anything's really changed from the last time I kind of updated the commission on this. Is there any questions on that? Again, the scope of this is going to be the housing quality standards kind of based off HUD. 
Um, we've incorporated a little bit of the International Property Maintenance Code standards for size of bedroom. Um, Off-street parking was included. Um, requirements as outlined. And we're ready to go. Awesome. Effective February 1. That's awesome. And anybody I don't know if you want, go ahead, Bill. I was going to say, did anybody catch what was going on in Cedar Falls and some of the debate where they, um, they're amending their code from four to three unrelated family members, I believe is how they, they did it. So some healthy debate that's going on in our neighboring community. So Was that in a four-bedroom house? Yeah, there, I think there was some. So three unrelated people in a four-bedroom house was right. some of yeah, that, that came up during our discussions of staff, and I think at PNZ a little bit, and then at council a little bit too, as far as how do you, in our current code, I mean, before, you know, and, and we need to re really look at our code too to make sure there's no confusion because it was, you know, assumed that you could have uh, family and then one unrelated in the R districts in Waverly, any size house. So family could be a, a single individual, unmarried, and then have a, another unrelated person living in that home, and that would be the maximum, even if it were a five-bedroom home or a you know, six-bedroom home. And so I know since I arrived in 08, and there was just a bunch of wrestling with, well, how do you enforce this? And we really, we would get calls about parking on the street more than anything, just parking on the street, you know, um, because of the occupancy. Well, the thought is too, if if the bedrooms are tied to off-street parking to a certain degree, that could help a little bit with that and then put the owner on notice that we need to address this. And part of that tool we have now is the registration process where we can actually get a hold of a responsible local manager to put down their name and contact number, whereas before we would have to research and uh, wrestle with that. So, but right, that, so we're trying to find that proper scale and that's, what, that's the way it was adopted. We'll see going forward. Uh, City of Waverly enforcing a rental housing to um, if I may yeah um, sec, um, code section 100.19.05 might be the area where we thought we had addressed screening and off street parking and that may be in here already and something you might or doesn't mesh. Okay. I was a little mm -hmm. reading through that today and thought, hmm. I was just going to say that uh, two things, I guess. One is that it's my understanding, although I haven't followed up on myself, but at council somebody mentioned that there's some uh, leg Iowa legislature discussions uh, or state code discussions uh, about changing some of the state definitions that are really going in the direction of what we just did. So um, I think that's a good sign that we uh, had good foresight and, and good thought about that. And the other is that city council members really expressed a lot of, if you didn't watch it, which I wouldn't blame you if you didn't, but um, uh, uh, that uh, there, there, there was a, a lot of appreciation um, expressed for the work that really planning and zoning did. Uh, I mean, the, you guys were the workhorse on this and so uh, that was very much appreciated. I'm presuming that staff will have a major role in just oversight. Which of the commissions is going to be expected to also provide uh, from a commission point? Is, is that uh, development or? Well, a board of adjustment was singled out as far as addressing. We ha may have some non-conforming properties in terms of the parking requirement. So to address an existing non-conforming parking situation with a home, that will be required to go to the Board of Adjustment to kind of make a case after a public hearing and public notice is given to neighbors. So you might see the Board of Adjustment getting busier, <laughs> okay. maybe here and there, uh, with a few requests to vary the code from the requirement to what they have and to essentially present it and see if there's a logical solution or uh, determination to be made on that. So might be good after maybe a year to just take a look and say, how are we doing? Staff, staff is aware of that. Like I kind of said at the on, onslaught, this is the first time in the history of Waverly this is being done. So I'm curious to see how it goes forward. My hunch is, like Edie was alluding to, we were aware that you know this family definition is currently being reviewed at the state legislature level. And 
some communities really rely on that. Like it was mentioned with Cedar Falls, what they're doing is that's their tool that they use. And Waverly, I mean, as staff enforcing that has found that's a little difficult, um, kind of like herding cats for lack of better term. So I think this is a little more, a um, little more objective and, and there's some rhyme and reason to it, measurable attributes to it that I think is a little more easy to defend uh, your actions um, and trying to figure out um, the measurements of properties to kind of say this is the scale of what this property is meant to do. Thank you. We move on then to the other item of old business and that's the, uh, we're looking at uh, putting together guidelines for developing specific corridors. Kate agreed to uh, give leadership to a task group and uh, Bill Wilson uh, asked to be a part of that and I don't know whether there was anyone else, but if anyone would like to join uh, Kate and her group and, well, you're, you're on everything. I was gonna say, just please let me know. I had Kate and Bill, uh, somebody else had expressed it. Yeah, it is you. It is you, okay, thank you. That's, that's good. Uh, Kate, uh, if you and that task group could maybe prepare some kind of a summary, uh, you put out a paper in uh, late December, I believe, that really pulled a lot of that material together. But uh, just kind of a summary as to where we're going. And then perhaps in March sometime, uh, after we have a chance to talk a little bit, uh, maybe start to bring city council into the fold and maybe it's a short, uh, a short report from the, the commission to them. But I think that'll begin to put some wheels under the, uh, the issue. Mm -hmm. the, the, the one thought I had as I read through your material, Ben, is that we're looking at Bremer Avenue as something that goes from the east of town out to the west of town. And for some reason, I think of Bremer Avenue as being two places. There, there's East Bremer and there's West Bremer, and they seem to be different. Yeah, I don't know. And, and the, 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 you know, the task group may say, no, it's one and the same. That's fine. <laughs> but Different in which way, I guess. Well, you know. Different in which way. Be, because uh, West Bremer, for example, for, for some of us, goes all the way out Heritage Way and, and comes in. And, and maybe it doesn't. I don't know. I guess I'm taking it beyond just well, the straight downtown line. Well, there's downtown and there's the other side of the river. I mean, it's. I guess I kind of look at it rather than east and west because the, those are gateways as they come in the community. But we have a historical district that sits kind of in the river district. Mm -hmm. That's about eight blocks. Yeah. And maybe that's the area that could be treated a little bit different on what's the aesthetics, what's the um, what's the concept for the for that area. I don't know. Yeah, most of you are too young to relate to this, but I think that group is going to have an e-ride. Well, go ahead. Rich is the only one that understands that. One of the things, just reading through the the notes from the 2012, is you know it talks a little bit about like walkability and some of that. How does this fit into a little bit with like leisure services or there's a, the Waverly Area Partnership for Healthy Living who've really looked at sidewalks and the Safe Routes to Schools program and some of those things, making sure that as a community we become more walkable, more bikeable, um, because there's I know there's just a deficit in a lot of our neighborhoods and even. I mean, just for kids to, to get safely around to the library and other places and stuff. I just don't know how that fits together. But there are groups that think about that out there as well. Mm -hmm. If there's any way to engage those groups or. Well, we didn't put any conditions on how far or how deep the, you know, the task group goes. It's, let's take a good look at it. And I, I think the results that we got you know, just a month or so ago on the, um, on the uh, barriers, uh, that that process works, and it makes makes a lot of difference when you dig in. So, anybody wants to be helpful on that, uh, just let Kate know. And I know Kate and I have arranged. We'll we'll hold a meeting tomorrow and start kind of a kickoff a little bit, and then from there we'll kind of branch out. I think okay. and go from there, and and I'll and I'll Kate Kate and I'll talk a little bit too, and I can invite the others uh, that have exp just talk to me after the meeting. Anybody wants to be a part of it can. Anything else for the good of the order? Move we adjourn. We are adjourned. Second.